Yo! Today, we'll be doing something a little new to the channel and explore the top tiers. Games changed a lot from snap meta with Bardock and GT dominating to the fusions with barriers and defensive assist. But now, version 1.33, let's take a look at the top 5 characters in Dragon Ball Fighters. Honestly, the top 10 characters are pretty interchangeable with each other with tons and tons of strong ones. I'll do my best to justify what me and many others consider as the top tiers with reasons as to why tips on how to play them and even counterplay things along the way. Starting at 5, we have Blue Vegeta. He's definitely had a rough start to the game being clowned on but now he has some amazing gameplay. His combos deal one of the most solo damage in the entire game due to being able to cancel Big Bang into other specials, loops in the corner, being able to dump a meter into his Rekkas and even supers with level 5 available. He can confirm a ton of straight hits into these damaging routes with a great corner carry. He has very strong neutral, whether it's movement, a great angled key blast, a huge big bang, and can punish anything full screen with his supers. Not to mention his EX grab. The guard armor starts on frame 4 going through everything. And it's unblockable by the way. It hits at a great angle in neutral for a full combo. Even if you miss, it's pretty safe. Quite hard to punish and it can even be used as a reversal during defense. Great after blocking 6Ms, during their Oki, and even after plus frames, but it does whiff on Crouchers. On top of that, he has a great mix where he can 2-3-6M plus assist into high-low. Only works with specific assist mid-screen. Now there is a gapper, but this can be a good thing since you can reset it to bait out a reflect for huge damage if they risk it. For Schmix, that works anywhere, you can just use his M into H Rekka, which side switches 2 for the same high low. He even has a grab mix too that prevent them from reflecting. And his level 3 by holding S at the end to get a super jump ID for a high low 50-50 where the high is also a safe jump. On top of just great regular solo pressure. And his assist can be pretty strong too and unique where A gives a lot of blocks and end hit stun. Now a couple of counterplay tips. Since he can dominate from full screen, try to maintain a mid-range distance by either being above or below them. This helps punish some of his tools, and being in front of him leaves you vulnerable. If they try to big bang in pressure, there's a gap you can counter. His grab can be punished by crouching to avoid it and then 2H at the end. So using 2L in situations you expect the grab to come out can be a better option to remain safe. Now at number 4, bring on Gotenks. This fella has always been low key lurking at the top ranks, but his complexity and lack of understanding keeps him from being too popular and well known. He also has amazing damage output from any hits similar to Blue Vegeta, except his aren't as easy and is hidden behind an expert layer where you have to master his countless specific routes. Neutral is great, having a beam he can angle around and super dash whether it hits for a full combo or even with the apply pressure is always nice. His multiple key blasts also help him approach and retreat. And of course his specials which can deal with super dashes, B plus on block, cross up, move around neutral and much more. You can cancel into 4 specials if you use his key blast 1 second as it resets the special patterns. The X punch is the most useful one as it's also plus on block. And speaking of block, he also has solid solo pressure too with a loss of mix up potential. And again he can punish anything full screen. But what makes him really special is his ability to handle Oki okay with a ghost. While Blue Vegeta has strong defensive tool, defense is already strong in the game, but dealing with all different Oki okay options on top of that gets difficult. The fact that Gotenks can deal with this for just one bar after the right combo route, while securing two 50-50s with it, while restoring both assists back makes him very strong, literally changing the way the game is played by turning something very hard to control into a strength. And his assist can be strong and universal, giving a lot of blocks for universal mix-ups with both A and B, where B can be used as poke as well and C is a beam that we all know how it works. And of course, being a smaller character always helps since you're harder to catch, hit confirm, combo and more. A few tips that might be helpful, if they start using too much of his key blast as pokes, or even his specials remind them of super dash, but don't rush your pace, since a good Gotenks can use a lot of fake outs, so rushing works in their favor. Against ghosts, it can be nice to try to vary it up, where max delay tag can be good to drag out the situation where you can try to reflect the first upcoming ghost. Up tag just gives them more of an advantage, but once they're in, it can be hard to always guess right. Now, time for the top 3. This is where things can get pretty controversial, but I'll make my case. Starting off with Jiren. He's had a similar journey as Blue Vegeta, being considered very weak when he was first released, but has gotten extremely strong. What about him makes him strong? Again, not only is his damage output great, 
strong neutral with a various high priority tools, but he's super flexible. His combos and game plan allow him to work with any assist, and he provides very versatile assists where there's offensive pokes or mixed heavy one. What pushes him the most are his defensive tools. Physical counters to reverse physical hits whenever, where you're safe if you're wrong and accidentally get hit by something else like a projectile or assist. And another counter for everything else, which is more useful when handling long range stuff, especially things like assist or beams. However, this one can't be countered on reaction, so be careful. These are especially strong now since they can always be comboed with active tag meterlessly too, and his normals are amazing now, where he can mix easily with his 2M as it's a 9 frame normal for an unreactable low for good damage, but his 2L, insane. It scales like a medium for amazing damage where most elites skill combos more so they do less damage and heavy skill combos so that they do more damage regardless of hit length. It's negative 2 on block, giving you very strong solo staggers where you can easily safely dash reset, which serves as strong abates as mentioned in my other videos, or where you can frame trap. And you can even reverse back into 2 all after his auto combo or 5M, where again you can reset or frame trap. But this is where it works amazing with his counters. Because Tool is already so ambiguous, if you show them you reset enough, they'll start to risk mashes of course, but if you pair Tool with counters, it really throws them off. You can add counters honestly whenever you're negative, not just after Tua. And showing them this option discourages them a lot where they become afraid of it. So you can eventually overwhelm them by overstepping due to the threat of the counter being used. It's like an option that's just lurking in the background that they want to avoid. So the success rates of mashing and getting your turn back like when you block on plus frames or on OK are much higher now. However, worth to note that he's at his best and really separates himself as a top candidate with a 17's barrier assist. Since even if you're wrong with a counter decision, they still get punished for it and you're safe. So you're even safer and can take bigger risks, making Jiren more overwhelming. Some advice when playing against them, while this counter situation is strong, Jiren players get a bit carried away with it, so dash resets and empty baits work well along with a dragon rush. But again, it's a mind game where they will mash sometimes too, so you won't always be right. For Oki, save jumps don't work as well as say against DP since a meaty hit is what Jiren wants to counter, but doing an empty setup with assist can be a better option to lock them down. And lastly, in pressure if you want to challenge, like if they stagger reset a lot after 2 all it's better to risk a jump back instead of an offensive mash to avoid the counter possibility as well. Finally, down to number 2, Cell. Being the perfect being, we can expect no less from your boy. Honestly, I hate fighting him and that's because of how much of a menace he is. Like everyone else on the list, he has great damage, access to easy rejumps, loops, and extensions. Solid tools for neutral like his ankled beam, close range rolling crush, but god his pressure is insane, lots of options, and of course one of the best specials in the game, his perfect attack. This is what sets him apart. EX is frame 4 invincible with it being frame 1 against overheads with great range. It's very dangerous and neutral as a poke since it's super safe even if it whiffs or on block, and with an assist it even leads to mix on block. It's amazing to counter Oki Settles because it's frame 1 anti-air ting, and defensively it's a very strong way to challenge, changing the way you have to play after plus frames, block 6ms and more. Just the threat of having half a bar scares opponents from approaching, pressuring, okiing, etc. Where Cell can abuse this fear to maximize his performance with less work. And again, you get a 50-50 mix right after if blocked anyways. Speaking of mix, he has some of the scariest level 3 situations. Input 236H and hold 4 to hit same side, or 6 to cross up. You do need some resources to combo it though, but it is worth it. Since he can also layer this mix with a low grab, spark base, and more. And speaking of supers, his level 1 is a frame 1 reversal, oh my god. So if you ever have solo cell and want to reverse with level 3, you can just stick with the lower committal level 1 and if it hits then go into some level 3 stuff. Now for counterplay tips, she there's not a whole lot of easy tricks to use against them. Playing safe by going for gapless mix or spaced okay can work well at times but this limits your own abilities and well this is why he's so strong. Before we talk about the best, let's quickly go over some honorable mentions. These are fellas that could have easily made their case for top 5 and are definite top 10 contenders as well. GT Goku. It was very close between him and Blue Vegeta at the 5 spot. He has a similar special except it's not a grab, but gives him insane movement options, not to mention how crazy it is with assists. Also has great meter dump combos and very functional assists. 
easily considered amongst the best. Adult Gohan. He's a bit interesting since turning into level 7 makes him the best in the game, being able to cancel specials into specials for insane things amongst ton of other things. He does need to get there though, making him resource hungry and not always worth it. However, he's still solid even at level 0. He's all over my channel, so check him out if you're curious about learning him. Teen Gohan. His younger self that has gone very buffed, great neutral, access a nice mix, insane damage with easier combos too now. Teen Gohan is a threat. Zamasu. Also, great damage but insane mix, ability to fully lock things down on Oki and guarantee a 50-50. And if he has a life lead, good luck trying to make a comeback. Ginyu. Now Ginyu is very unique, but his Ginyu Force Mastery can be super overwhelming in the right hands. He can time them better now, use them to give himself a mix, secure Oki, even on level 3 where he can change the order, and of course body change into any other top tier, leaving them with a cruelest Ginyu down to little health. Nappa. Well, this fella is Cyberman. What can we say? Lurks in neutral around assist and projectiles, used for insane reset setups and mix, on top of all his dumb specials, normals, improved combos, and oh my god, help me. Finally, at number one, none other than the god of destruction himself, Beerus. Where do we even start? A 2M slide in the DM full screen poke that's projectile and assist info, 5H with a big hitbox that also goes through them giving you an offensive poke when it's normally not possible. His damage potential is crazy with his EX specials and 236S. His neutral is unique but can be very strong with his orbs and movement, and these orbs bait super dashes as well. And he also has defensive tools. His DP is super quick and can be very hard to counter. You can actually safely tag out from it into his level 1 and DHCs with most of the cast. Even on Reflect, his new teleport level 3 can be used to punish anything full screen. It's a better reversal than most since it flips the corner to fully switch the advantage around. Oh, did I mention it's extremely quick and hard to punish? At Limit Break, this can be used as a mix after level 1 2, turning a risky DP into a guaranteed turn for 4 bars. He also covers another key part of the game, Oki. Unlike Jiren and Cell who only has his level 3 mix, Beerus can set up orbs to limit Oki depending on the combo. Whether it's using a single orb to cover up tech, EX orbs to provide additional mash protection, or his 236S to get additional pressure, it covers everything. And yes, he also has level 3 mix. Speaking of mix, his mix and pressure is insane. He can get into it with M orbs plus assist for a high low 50-50, use EX to get endless plus frames which can also be held to bait out reflex by the way. The layers are truly endless and yes his assists are amazing. I do have a couple counterplay tips, match up things that can be used to check his neutral like beams or projectile nullifying things when you see him trying to set up bigger orbs can be nice. Try not to commit too much besides that though. When you block a DP and they spark expect another one. If they level 1, you can vanish or reversal in this gap. If they level 3 you and you're safe, you can punish it with a quick super that's within 13 frames. Some characters rising JL if it hits. Or some specials if you cancel it from a jump. Similar to a tiger need 2 through 6, 7 input, but you press the special earlier so you don't leave the floor. And that concludes this video. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Who are your top characters and why? We can discuss down below, but uh, keep it friendly y'all. Hoping to update this later on if the game continues to progress still. So I'll see y'all next time. Peace.